I 22F love my grandmother 70F with all my heart, but she is very difficult to live with. She moved in around 6 years ago due to a hurricane that damaged her roof. She was only supposed to stay for a couple of months because we were trying to fix her roof, but she also had to get some kind of surgery for her arm. We were understanding, and we just didn't want her to stay alone in her now damaged house while healing from surgery, so we had no problem with her being here. At first, within the first few days of surgery, she was acting sickly. I constantly need help with this or that, but whenever family came over and all the attention was on her, I talked to her about things she liked. She's no longer sick or fragile. She's running up and down the stairs, showing off everything she bought. She forgot she was a frail old lady. She only came here with a basket of clothes and a suitcase. We thought she came with a suitcase because she travels a lot because she's a singer and tours from time to time. Looking back at that now, she was probably plotting to move in with us. When she first moved in, my brother wasn't here, so she got to stay in his bedroom. It didn't take much time for the room to get kind of stuffy because she loves shopping and buying things, especially things she doesn't need at all. That huge room, and for her to take up so much room within a month, was just crazy. Another weird thing is that she'll buy a whole set outfit and only wear it once to her performance, so try to imagine how many clothes were stuffed in my brother's closet. Now try to imagine her buying more clothes, so now she has to put them in my closet. Now try to imagine within the span of her career as a performer all the clothes and shoes she bought, all in her house, in the single room of her house. For some reason, she never wants to touch or wear it again, but she refuses to get rid of it even though she completely abandoned her house. Now imagine her buying a storage garage just to fill up with more useless things that she is never going to look at again. A couple of months later, my brother wants to move in. She's pissed and asked my mother why her own grandson is moving back into his childhood home, and then asked my mom where she is supposed to stay. My mom basically told her she could go back home since her arm healed and she came back from her tour, so she should have enough money to fix the roof. She said she spent a couple of hundred dollars on her tour and couldn't afford to move back. Complete lies. So she asked if she could move into my mother's personal room. My mom has two rooms. Her bedroom that she shares with my dad and her hobby room. She barely slept in her bedroom, so that hobby room was her personal room. She did everything in that room. She ran a personal blog for her clothing that she crafted herself. She did makeup tutorials. She made beautiful wigs, etc. She was basically a content creator while also being a hairstylist. She needed that room for work and content. My grandmother knew all these things and insisted on moving into that room, so my mom reluctantly let her move in there. My mother is now miserable and frustrated because of this. She's basically put her life on pause because granny won't move out of that room and it looks horrendous in there, and I swear there is a rotting odor in that room now. I can't explain everything that happened in the past six years, but I'll try some of the things my grandmother does that make everyone hate living with her as best as I can. My mom's room was pretty spacey, so when my grandmother moved there, she did what she does best she hoards. We can't even fit in that room anymore. There's only a small space to walk in and out of. There's some weird rotting smell in that room, but I think it's either from piles of clothes or the fact that my grandmother showers only once a month. I counted, so I'm not exaggerating. We can all tell when she's showering because of the weird noise she makes in there. She blows up that restroom. Imagine a quiet, peaceful night, and you're about to fall asleep when suddenly you hear Rack City by Tyga inches away from your bedroom, in the restroom. Mind you, your bedroom is in front of the restroom, so you have to hear a 70-year-old woman hit it and pooping there. That's what I'm dealing with. Or how about whenever someone is done cooking? Normally, in this household, we have to let each other know when we are done cooking, or else we just have no clue. But you have someone who listens to every single sound or movement and knows when you're done cooking before you ever tell anybody. Then, proceed to eat most of the dinner. Now we barely cook because someone keeps hoarding all the food. Not only that, but when they do cook, they cook for themselves only. Ever had a roommate that listened to your every move? Listen to every conversation you've had in the privacy of your own room. That's my grandmother. She tries so hard to avoid my mom because my mom keeps discussing with her when and how she'll be moving out. My parents' bedroom is right next to the room my grandmothers are in now. She listens to possibly everything they say and do in there. Everything. She knows when my mother is moving around. She knows when we are with our mother and talking to her about whatever. I'll never forget how we complained about how grandma eats all the food and cooks for no one but herself. We were tired and felt so uncomfortable around grandma. The next day she cooks again, but to our surprise, she actually makes us something. It's four fish patties and like two french fries. It is a pattern, too. I know she hears us complaining because the next day she'll order pizza or something. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a peephole in my parents' bedroom. Also, 
Let me add that we don't care about her cooking for us. We always appreciate it. It's just that we've noticed that she's really selfish about it. God forbid we go out to eat too. If we come back home with food for ourselves, she will complain and say we're treating her like trash. Don't ever mention fixing up her house. Don't mention moving her back into her house because I promise you will wish you hadn't. There's a range of things she'll do. The first few times we tried to talk to her about the house, she would just complain about how she doesn't have the money, that when she tours, she's not making much money, and that she's basically being paid pennies to perform. Except that's not true because when we do go to see her perform and she is done with her gig, she gets paid. Usually, it costs about $2,000 or more per performance, so imagine when she goes on a month-long tour. She'll brag about it on Facebook about how much she's getting paid and where she's going. So we know it's really not about the money. Then, during my freshman year in college, things got more drastic. Now, every time my mom mentions the house, suddenly my grandma is all ill, can't walk and needs to be pampered or taken care of. She had a pinched nerve in her back but acted like she got shot or something. Every time I leave my room, she moans super loudly. So when I tried to use the restroom, she would moan loudly, like she needed help. Then I stay in the restroom, and then she goes quiet. Then I walk back to my room, and she starts moaning loudly again. Then I stay in my room for a second, and she's quiet, dead silent. She was faking it. I started to ignore her because I knew she wouldn't help. Then she gets up walks to my mom's room to talk to her. My mom plays dead because she doesn't want to deal with her either, granny sees my mom is asleep. Then, magically, my grandmother straightens up her back and dashes to the restroom as if nothing was wrong with her. She still does this every time we try to talk to her about the house or about moving out. Suddenly her back hurts and she can't move. Then she'll call the ER and come back home the same day because nothing is actually wrong with her. I know you're probably wondering, why not move into an apartment? She's a rich cow. So why not tell her to move into an apartment? It didn't work. Actually, she was the one who kept insisting on moving into an apartment since she knew we wanted her out of the house. She said that in an argument with my mom, my mom actually took her to go shopping around for apartments the next day. Granny just had to double it, I guess, because as soon as they found the nearest apartments, Grandma said she needed to go to the ER because she thought her blood pressure was rising. So now you're wondering, why not get her to move in with someone else? We tried that too. We regret that so much. Grandma finally contacted my uncle because suddenly she cared about her only great-grandchild. She spends the whole day there, then comes back home with some stuff. She told our uncle that she was getting mistreated and that my mom was going to kick her out and leave her out in the streets. My uncle, for some reason, believes, despite knowing how narcissistic she is, and starts the whole argument with my mom. My mom explains to my uncle what is actually happening, and he's dumbfounded to find out his mother is doing what she does best. Then he offers my grandmother a room in his house if she ever leaves ours. My grandmother later refuses because there isn't a nearby airport and no place she can shop. We are all somehow still dumbfounded by her consistently self-centered, narcissistic, and self-serving personality. That wasn't even the only time she went around accusing us of mistreating her. When the ER came to our house during one of her fake episodes, she told one of the people taking her to the hospital. She was so sick and she hadn't eaten in days. We were all about to blame ourselves. My hand was starting to hurt from how tight I was clenching it. We just couldn't believe she would say that. We were cooking for her, heating up soups for her, and buying electrolyte water for her. We were taking full care of her. And that's what she decided to do. Throw us under the bus for no reason. Luckily, nothing happened after that, but she still complains from time to time to someone that we're trying to throw her out on the streets. She loves playing a victim. Unsurprisingly, she also wasn't a good mother to both her children and pets. The best way I can describe her relationship with my mom is pretty much that movie Mommy Dearest, because she treated her daughter like a dog when my mother was a child. My grandmother always made sure she had the best clothes, shoes, and hairdos, while her children struggled constantly. She abused my mother the most. She would find any reason to hurt her. As my mother got older and my grandma got none the wiser, my grandmother was expecting everyone to treat her like a celebrity. She's still like this. She thinks she paid her dues and believes now that she is fully entitled to live here with us despite everyone wanting her out. She fully expects everyone to take care of her, even if she mistreats them. For pets, I don't even understand. She'll get a pet and take care of it for a while. As pets grow older, Granny now hates them and wants them to die. Why even own one if you're going to be like that? Her last dog also lived with us until her pet dog passed away. She despised that dog. She literally wanted that dog to die. The first time her dog was sick, she did absolutely nothing to help it. We had to take care of her dog because she wouldn't. It turns out it had a treatable infection, 
and it was taken care of. She just went back to resenting her dog. We got a new dog, and Grandma just grew to resent her dog even more. We pretty much cared for her pet dog until she unfortunately passed. Grandma didn't really care and was basically being theatrical with her grief. Just the worst. When her pet was alive and we had our own pet dog, she would try and take care of our dog while completely alienating her own. She's just awful. She insults everyone and is extremely bigoted. She loves degrading others over their appearance while not looking too good herself. She loves making fun of overweight people, despite gaining over 50 pounds within a few years. She also forgot that her grandchildren are also pretty overweight. She'll smile and call me pretty and my brother handsome, but she'll insult her other two grandchildren, who don't have to deal with her. My entitled mom seems to be blaming me for my poor health and won't stop pushing for natural remedies. I have biliary disease, and my mom keeps going on about me eating better, doing liver flushes, and stuff that isn't helpful and could even be harmful. I had to go on a liquid and then soft food diet last year. I'm still mostly on it, though I have been able to add on a few things and still have to go slowly and carefully. Most of my protein comes from High Protein Boost, a nutrition replacement drink for my doctor. She keeps trying to get me to take turmeric and drink turmeric tea, which says on the package do not consume if you have liver, gallbladder, or biliary problems. We're pretty sure she snuck me some when she was helping me recover from surgery a couple months ago, because I had some issues one day in particular after she brought me a tea that didn't taste right. I was still really drugged up. So at the time I didn't think about it and only later realized she had left the tea for me to drink. I put the pieces together, and I realized what she had done. When I sent her a photo of the warning label, she said she was glad I saw that before trying it. Before that instance, she had ordered some various supplements, including turmeric and curcumin, for me and had them shipped directly to the house. She texted my husband and was encouraging him to give them to me. He helps me with my medications when I'm too sick to get out of bed and I trust him wholeheartedly to keep me safe. Obviously, he hasn't done that. He said if she wants to waste her money, that's on her. Despite knowing about the warning label on the tea and us repeatedly telling her I can't take it, she is still sending my husband articles about the benefits of turmeric and curcumin. This is where the text conversation started between them yesterday. She sent him a journal article about the benefits of curcumin. The article was from 2013, and he responded with a more recent 2021 article explaining how patients with liver issues are negatively affected by turmeric and curcumin. Fun fact about my husband. He is extremely patient and doesn't fly off the handle. We also live in her house, where we pay the mortgage in Hoa. She lives with her new husband two hours away. The mortgage in Hoa combined are half of what we could rent a tiny dump for locally. We are actively saving for a house, but the market here has been terrible. After that, she went off on her second favorite topic, the COVID vaccine. We had the original bivalent shots as soon as we were eligible to get them, and we have had annual boosters since. We don't get them as often as she seems to think, though. We get it at the same time as our annual flu vaccine. She asked him if we'd gotten any more shots since our last one in October. Um, no, because that's not how they work. But we do plan on getting our next booster in the fall. After that, she sent him her diet that helps numbers. I don't know what numbers she's referring to, but my liver function tests are scary bad. Like, I've had six procedures in the last year to try to figure out why. Her diet recommendations aren't bad. It's a good, basic, healthy diet, including lean meat, lots of vegetables and fruits, oatmeal, Greek yogurt, that type of stuff. But they're essentially what I'm already eating, except I'm still not able to eat a lot, but meat specifically is difficult. I supplement with high protein boost, which she thinks is harmful since it's not natural. Also, I'm allergic to oats and have to keep reminding her. I love oatmeal and wish I could eat it, but it triggers joint inflammation and skin issues. Then she sent another long text, which really hurt. Sometimes there is too much information out there that contradicts each other. Nothing natural is harmful unless it has added chemicals. God didn't make junk. But don't worry, I'm done. All it seems to do is upset me. She has to get sick tired of being sick tired of this. And please, you don't have to tell her I've said anything. Three things about that specific text. First, she says she's done a lot but will continually bring up unnecessary and unhelpful stuff. Even when I ask her to stop. Second, she doesn't think I'm sick and tired enough. I've had a year's worth of poor health on top of having had 18 years of these cycles with my liver. They've only gotten worse over time. And I've tried everything, including dieting, which did help, but obviously not enough because I'm sick again. I've been dismissed enough by doctors in the past 
and I've finally gotten into a good team at a good hospital who have all assured me it's not in my head and I'm really sick. I feel like she wants me to suffer. I honestly can't imagine getting sicker. It's already disrupting my life, and I've been lucky it's not any worse. I don't want it to. I want to get better. She always told me growing up that I was a hypochondriac whenever I would complain about stuff like frequent headaches. When I reminded her of that a few months ago, she gasped and said she'd never say anything like that. I remember specific instances, and it was way more than once or twice. Third, she always tells him not to say anything to me, which is hilarious. He's my husband and best friend. Then, whenever she goes on these rants with him, she'll kind of disappear and won't talk to either of us for a week or more which is honestly fine. I need the breaks. Which makes us feel like she knows what he is telling me. I've never indicated that I knew about the conversations or asked her to stop doing that with him because I want her to feel like she can trust him. He would rather be the target because he doesn't want her ranting at me and he doesn't want me stressed. My husband basically repeated the same things we have told her already. Including that this is probably hereditary and something we're going to have to deal with long term. For context. My dad's mom's side of the family has a history of gallbladder disease and liver cancer. I haven't had contact with him or any of his relatives in over 10 years. I cut them off for my own emotional and mental health. The last two texts she sent him circled back to the COVID vaccine and how it's not natural. She even told him that I always had problems with shots growing up, which is a flat out lie. I was on state health insurance growing up and she always got our vaccines on time. She thinks getting the virus will protect you. Luckily, I already had the vaccine before I caught COVID, and I'm glad I did because I can't imagine how bad it would be if I had just dogged it. She also stated that my dad's mom died of the vaccine. No one on my dad's side of the family reached out to tell me my grandma had died or invited me to the funeral. She told me in a text message, and that was the entire conversation. My grandma had liver cancer and a liver transplant 10 years prior to her death and I do know she had chronic pancreatitis as a result of the cancer treatment. So, I have no context as to what she means about the vaccine since I wasn't around or involved with that family. My grandma died four years ago, and this is the first time she's ever brought that up. After the last text, my husband just ignored her. She came back hours later and apologized, which she always does and always thinks makes everything better, and we should just all forget and move on.